What's going on, guys? Wednesday college basketball. Today's video, I'm going to go over every single game. I do this every day. So if you're new to my channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. Another whiteboard winner, Indiana plus four and a half. Told you guys they'd win the game outright. Probably be their last win of the season. Uh, a lot of people liked Wisconsin in the comments. A lot of people thought I was crazy for this one. Um, but Indiana comes through. We hit our third winner in the last five, I believe. So uh, back on track. Hopefully I can get you guys another winning pick on the whiteboard in today's video. There's a bunch of games on Wednesday. I think I'll be able to find you guys something. Uh, so drop a like on today's video. I'm going to try to get you another winner. Drop a like for that one though. And hopefully we can get another winner on the board for you guys. Recap for Tuesday. Um, confusion. Uh, what the fuck? What? College basketball. The last couple of days is making zero sense. Home court favorites are blowing massive leads. Okay, so here's the thing about blowing leads. Let's say we gamble. We take a road underdog. And they're competitive. They're even up like a bucket at halftime. They're tied at halftime, whatever. You're looking good, right? You got points in your back pocket. They're being competitive. They're on the road. They're showing toughness. You're feeling pretty good about your wager. And the home favorite blows it open in the second half. The crowd gets into it. You lose your bet. That's very normal. That's like an extremely normal thing. But these big home favorites being up 20, 30 points in the middle to three quarters of the way through these games and just collapsing to give up the covers. What is with that? Kansas State up 30 at home over West Virginia. Blow the cover the other day. Don't cover nine and a half. Game actually goes to overtime. They almost should have fucking blown the entire game and lost. Today, one of the plays for members, Houston, we got in early, 12 and a half. The line closes at 14 and a half. We're in great position. Two points of closing line value. The live spread midway through the second half was 19 and a half. They were up like 17 points. Completely fall asleep, blow the cover, ended up being super close at the end since he gets cover. A horrible Cincinnati team. A very bad Cincinnati team. Another one, Mississippi State. We got in, I gave out the money line when they were only a two and a half point favorite. I think it was minus 144, minus one, somewhere around minus 140. A great money line price. The spread goes all the way up to five. We had the money line on a spread that balloons up to five, home court, dominate the whole game, up double digits, blow it at the end. <laughs> what? And I know Kentucky's good, but they have no defense. Mississippi State looks so bad at the end of the game. With home court advantage, crazy loss again. Texas Tech minus three and a half. The last game they have to play the Longhorns in that rivalry. And the players didn't even show up until it was too late. They showed good effort in like, what, the final 10 minutes? Okay, great. The game's over. Texas already knew it. They got the margin from almost 30 down to about 10, and I think they lost by about 11. So where was that effort in the first half? They just got blasted at home. Ken Palm ranks the Red Raiders home court as number one in the country. Didn't seem that way tonight. So cash on Florida State, and then Colorado State is currently in overtime, which, again, I, I don't know what's going to happen in overtime. I'm not going to check it because I'm going to do the video for you guys today. But, again, closing line value. I gave out Colorado State early in the afternoon yesterday, minus four and a half. It got bet all the way up to minus seven and a half. That's great value. We're getting awesome, awesome picks here. Three out of these five picks had great closing line value. Crazy, man. At least Florida State came through in cash for us. That was a nice home spot for Florida State over a pretty bad NC State team. Um, but only made that a half unit play. So a losing day for members. Uh, the good news is you don't go to jail. You don't get the electric chair. Uh, people don't inject you with poison. It's a losing day. You move on. You have discipline. And uh, we're coming off a 9-3, and 75% winning weekend. So gave some back over the last two days, and that's okay. We're going to keep marching on. We got college basketball every single day. You guys keep these units the same. Keep the discipline. Keep marching. Keep stacking the winners. The losing days are mixed in. And overall, when you look back on entire month of, of, of picks and entire month of betting, you're up a good amount. It's crazy how much the wins stack up, even with these losing days and these ebbs and flows. That's betting, and if you can't handle it mentally and you find yourself going full tit, full tilt, or or, or chasing on parlays, it's probably not going to work out. It's probably not going to work out. I think that's pretty much it. Um, Kansas was another shocking one. 
I did give out BYU and the points on SoBet. If you guys are not familiar with SoBet, it's it's kind of like a hybrid. It's like a social media platform, but there's like 50 or 60 professionals. I was actually recruited to be on there, so I am a SoBet pro. The link is in the description. SoBet's only $9 a month. I give out a single pick per day on SoBet. If that's of interest to you guys, you can join me over there. Did give out the BYU pick today. Cash that one. Uh, but the best stuff by far, by a country mile. Um, all the stuff I'm betting personally is right here on YouTube. So if you do want my picks uh, each and every day, all of them, higher volume, become a member here on YouTube. And I'm working on a website as well because I keep getting comments from you guys and and people sometimes struggle to find the join button. And sometimes there's confusion with the community tab where I put the posts with the picks. Um, so I'm going to try to make it a little bit easier for you guys and, and put some more options on a website. Um, so hopefully that will help some people out that are even interested. And if you guys aren't, I go over every single game right here on YouTube, put a pick on the board for you guys and, uh, give my opinion. All you guys like to load up the comment section with your ideas, your parlays, your, your crazy bets, your straight bets, the bets you like. And, uh, we all love to see it. We all read them. Everyone bounces through the comment section and it's nice to, uh, ha have a good community here that we can all just really read, you know, dozens and dozens of people's opinions and uh, it's just something nice to look at. So, guys, let us know for Wednesday. What are you looking to wager? What do you love? What do you hate? What's the trap game? Let us know, and I'll let you know what I'm thinking on every single game. I think it's time to get to it. By the way, TikTok link also in the description. Check out TikTok. Daily pick on TikTok every single day. Wednesday college hoops. Pretty excited. Let me get a little bit of fresh paper here because I might make some notes. I only gave out one pick so far from Wednesday. We'll probably end up with maybe six of them, five or six total tomorrow. But it's going to be a late night. I just chugged coffee before this video. It's 1 a.m. It'll probably be a 4 a.m. night for me. I got to do a little bit of extra digging because just the way basketball's been, I want to research like some five and 10 year trends to make sure late February, early March isn't some weird time period where you can have an advantage for looking for certain things. It's hard to explain, but I do the work for you and you become a member. So let's just get into these games. I'll give you my opinions and uh, we'll move on. What do we got here? I'm going to skip a couple. Okay. Like Detroit Mercy at Youngstown state, two bad teams and a 19 and a half point spread. I'm not going to give my opinion on that. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of games. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I come on here. I try to give a short recap. I let you know what the members had for transparency purposes, let you know what's available if you're looking to get into more detail here in the industry through me, and then we get to the game. So I try to do it as quick as I can. Some days it's it's cringeworthy, and, and I apologize for that, and some days it's fun, and uh, maybe today's entertaining, and, and, and some people think I'm an idiot. Some people know that I know what I'm talking about. Been doing this for 13 years. Let's get into these games and hopefully crush a lot of them and hopefully make it four out of six on that whiteboard. Really trying to get on like a 10 day run here. Really, I'm really feeling it. It's got to come right now, all the way, all the way through the tournament. Right now, through the tournament. Let me get this paper set up. Let's get to these games. What do we got here? 6 30, a little Rhode Island at VCU action. Rhode Island, VCU. Boy, Rhode Island stinks, but I just don't know if this VCU team can cover 12 and a half. They had to have a comeback in a previous game. I don't know if it was their last game or their second to last, but I had a money line play on them in a recent game, and it took a it took a pretty good effort either at the end of the first half or in the second half to actually get the win. So I don't love laying 12 and a half points, but in this game, that's the way I'm going to look. I mean, if, if you got to bet this spread, if you're, if, if you know, if you're going to the game and you just got to have action or something, you got to look at VCU at home, Missouri, Florida. So a game like this, this, this just the Missouri at Florida getting 13 and a half points seems like it's fitting into this recent trend of bad teams getting blasted for fucking 99% of the game. And with a little bit of effort in a couple minutes, they get a cover. They're not winning. They're not beating Florida. No way. Can they cover 13 and lose by 12? Maybe. I've, 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 I'm so neutral. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what way I lean. I guess Florida, cause they're so much better. You just got to cross your fingers and hope they don't let their foot off the gas. Like every goddamn team has been doing lately. 
Northwestern Maryland. What the actual fuck? Northwestern is a five and a half. <laughs> five and a half. Hold on. Am I? Is this like a? Is this like a? I gotta check. Hold on. Let me check another sports book. Is this a typo? Is this a mess up? Did they mess up? They put the wrong number on this one. Let me check out DraftKings here. Let me scroll down to the Maryland game. Five. It's five on DraftKings. Well, it's five and a half on FanDuel. Maryland is laying five and a half versus Northwestern. You got to lay it. <laughs> I mean, low hanging fruit. And look, I get it, man. These, these games lately, the public square, casual, brainless sides are cashing lately. Kentucky getting five fucking points against Mississippi State. That was the biggest low-hanging fruit I've ever seen. It's like, oh, you got this highly ranked team, and I can get him with five points to spare as well. I'll take the Kentucky team. I'll take the Blue Blood and the big spread. Mississippi State was the right side for 99% of the game. But these public casual bets are cashing recently. What is going on? I guess they're letting everyone have a little bit of winning before they smash you in the tournament. The sharps will come back around. I'm gonna I'm gonna lean Maryland here. Get uh, laying five and a half at home. If it gets past six, I mean it, that starts to get into crazy land. Five and a half. Hate to do it, but I gotta look Maryland here. Be interesting to see if this line gets bought back down. If some big money comes in on Northwestern at five and a half or six, it might start to come back down. So keep an eye out for that. DePaul Xavier. No, I'm gonna skip this. Don't. This is stupid. I mean, this is a game just like what we've seen lately. 19 and a half. You're going to you're going to basically place a bet and hope Xavier keeps their foot on the gas. Xavier could cover 19 in the first half if they want. I'm not betting them, especially against a team that has like zero wins. Not doing it. North Texas Tulane, brutal game. I got to lean Tulane. They're getting two and a half at home. North Texas has been good, but God, laying two and a half on the road. That's a pretty strong line in favor of North Texas, but I'm still going to lean two, two lane here, getting a bucket at home. Auburn, Tennessee, this one this one is where probably trends and sharp money uh, contradict my gut feeling. My gut feeling was like, whoa, five and a half with Auburn? I'll take the points. Like That's what I thought when I looked at this initially. I'm like, Auburn, five and a half against Tennessee? Yeah, give me the points. Money's on Tennessee, 65% of it. We'll see what the line does. That's not a huge public play. It's public, but it's not monster public. Like Kansas losing to BYU, that burned everybody because everybody's parlay had Kansas money line. We all know that, and a lot of people bet the spread. Kansas in late February under Bill Self at the fog is usually dynamite. It was a pretty good line, but I gave out BYU. That's another conversation. I'm still going to lean Auburn here, man. I like this. This, I like the, um, I'm not going to judge Auburn from that Kentucky game. That Kentucky game at home, that was just like a perfect storm. Kentucky was hot. They couldn't miss. They just could not miss. They could, you could blindfold the fucking guy. You could throw a fadeaway up from the three-point arc, and it would go in. It would swish. Bottoms. Wide open. It just kept rimming out they just couldn't buy a shot i'm not going to judge them off of that i still think we have some recency bias from that game i think it really sticks with some people tennessee i just think auburn's a pretty good matchup for tennessee they just have the toughness they got some guys with pretty good physicality pretty good size there for auburn i just don't trust this tennessee offense at times now if ziegler gets hot out of the blue and Connect goes crazy as usual. Home court as well. Five and a half is reasonable to lay with the home team here. But I'm going to lean Auburn at getting five and a half. Uh, I like Auburn. I like this Auburn team. I think they're kind of sneaky in the tournament. I think that Kentucky game was, was a good reset. It kind of knocked down their public image a little bit. They're kind of floating just under the radar. And uh, I think they're very, very dangerous. An extremely good basketball team. Providence Marquette, a 10 and a half point spread. I want to take the points with Providence, but Providence almost like has too many road covers. They've almost covered too many road games. Are they going to get blasted here? 
I don't know. I mean, the way things have gone, Marquette will be up fucking 30 at halftime and they'll just fall asleep and, they'll, you know, they'll end up winning by eight. Providence will cover. That's how it's been going lately. It's ridiculous. Slightly to Marquette. Hate the game. Staying off it. Louisville Duke hate it's 20 and a half point spread. I don't know. Again, do you trust Duke to like keep their foot on the gas? Do they want to win by 30 or are they cool with a 17 point win? Uh, yeah, I can't bet this stuff. This is nuts. These spreads are ridiculous. Let's keep scrolling. Let's see if we can find some decent stuff here. Some garbage games in the seven o'clock slate. Furman on the road to Western Carolina. Catching a point and a half. I like Furman at home. I don't like him on the road. I'm going to lean Western Carolina on the money line. Richmond, St. Louis. Interesting. So the Spiders are only laying five and a half. St. Louis stinks, but it's a home game for them. Do they come out of the blue and get one here? I mean, Richmond's the better team. There's no doubt about it. But it's a road college basketball game in late February. Not interested. I'm moving on. I have no opinion. These games that I'm passing, I'm not passing it just to like skip the game or something. I truly don't know. And if I don't know, I'm not even going to try to suggest something to you guys. Um, anything I say, I truly mean, and I stand behind it and usually have money behind it. California going to Colorado, 11 and a half feels just a bit rich. Colorado off a massive win over Utah, killed them. They've been playing way better lately, but 11 and a half is pretty stout. This feels more like an eight, seven, eight point win for me. Slight lean a cow getting the points, but it's a road game. Colorado's really good at home. Their only screw up at home all year was Arizona, which is, you know, reasonable. Colorado's strong at home. I don't like going against them here, but I don't want to lay 11 and a half against a cow team that's playing halfway decent ball. Central Florida on the road, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, I think think is on the ban list after blowing that Oklahoma game yet again another example home team big 12 rivalry game revenge game they're up the entire game I think even double digits they blew the game on a buzzer beater to Oklahoma are they done are they cooked through they can't make the tournament and I think UCF is done as well but they might have a glimmer of hope I'd have to double check I if Oklahoma State held on to that Oklahoma game, I would like them here. I'm done with Oklahoma State. They had that little stretch, that little covering stretch. They beat Cincy on the road. Uh, they took down BYU at home. I think that's it. I, th I think that was their little high point of the season. I have no interest in, in, in backing Oklahoma State ever again. They've been playing better lately. UCF, usually way, way, way better at home. Uh, that's undeniable, but what the fuck has home court meant lately? It's been like the opposite. I'm going to lean UCF catching a bucket, catching two and a half here. Hate that game. Flip a coin. Oklahoma at Iowa State. Oklahoma coming off the miraculous comeback buzzer beater win over a bad Oklahoma State team. Now they're on the road to an Iowa State team who kind of let their guard down in a sloppy performance against West Virginia. Do we see a sharp performance by Iowa State here in a 25-point blowout? I think so. I like Iowa State. I don't think nine and a half is enough. Give me Iowa State laying the points. Uh, eight o'clock time slot. What do we got in here? We got an 830. We got a South Carolina catching four and a half at AM. Sharp money's on AM. 61% of bets on the Gamecocks, but 70% of the cash on AM. AM favored four and a half. Very curious to see what this line does, but. That hasn't meant anything lately. It can be exactly like that Mississippi State game. Maybe Texas a and gets up to a five, five and a half point favorite tomorrow. You get in at four and a half, you're feeling good, and they're up the entire game. And at the very end, South Carolina makes a couple buckets, and they lose by three or four. You get screwed by the hook. It's just college basketball has been so crazy lately. It was so predictable for a good stretch. There's been some days where it's fairly normal. It's been some chaos lately, guys. It's getting it's getting pretty crazy. Maybe consider going a little bit lower volume, cutting those bets in half, trying to kind of find your confidence again, and then kind of ramp up things as you go. I'm going to lean Texas A&M at home here, but they have not proven us anything. All these games where we're like, here's another opportunity. Here's another opportunity. Come on, Texas A&M. Like, 
you're playing yourself out of the tournament. You got to find a way to get these wins. They haven't got them done. Um, I'm going to lean Texas A&M, but I hate it. I, it's just kind of a system play. An unranked team at home, minus four and a half over a highly ranked team, 18th ranked South Carolina. I mean, it's just low-hanging fruit to take a ranked team with the points on the road. People do it all the time. I'll take the unranked home favorite. Bama, Ole Miss. Ole Miss is cooked, man. My last little glimmer of hope for them was that South Carolina game. They were flatter than a pancake. And after what Alabama gave up to Kentucky, 117 points on the road. Now, I know Kentucky's good, but 117 is inexcusable. I don't trust Alabama defense on the road. I don't trust him minus six and a half. I don't. I lean Old Miss here, and I hate Old Miss. I'm not going to bet him. No way I'm betting this. No way you should bet this. But if you have to, if a gun's next to your head and they make you make a choice, Old Miss plus the points. Seton Hall, Creighton at 9 o'clock, 8.5 point spread. That seems a bit rich. That seems a bit high. I mean, we saw Butler go to Creighton get a win. We also saw Creighton beat the crap out of UConn at home. So what do you get? I mean, you just kind of see how these games are pretty crazy lately. What do you get? I'm going to take the points with Seton Hall. Don't love it. Don't love it. I'd much rather have the Hall at home. Virginia Boston College. Um, look, I'm a big, I am a big, big kind of system guy. I like these home team short favorites versus teams that have a, a a public image of being better or maybe they're ranked versus unranked. I like those spots. I'm the king of those spots. Here, I just truly think the wrong team is favored. Virginia's beaten Boston College. I'm sorry. Give me Virginia on the money line. You could take the two and a half points, but give me Virginia on the fucking money line. Plus 108. Haven't bet that yet, but I like that one. I, it's just... Usually I'm like, oh, wow, Boston College, you know, favored two and a half. Like the odds makers are telling you something. I I, I, I believe in that and I go by that a lot. Here I can't. I, I, I can't do it. Virginia off a couple embarrassing performances. You got to go Virginia. They're going to get it right here. They're going to beat Boston College. Minnesota, Illinois. It just seems like we keep coming back to the same situation. Illinois, much better team. Minnesota wildly better, 10, 20, 50 times better at home. Minnesota can be any team in the country at home. They're not good on the road, but at a spread of 11 and a half, Illinois with really no true point guard, do we trust Illinois to have the firepower to gain that type of distance? I mean, Illinois, they had to have a comeback over, who was it, Iowa? think it was Iowa. They had to really put it on in the second half to get the job done and get the win. Um, I don't know if I can lay 11 and a half with Illinois. I like Illinois when they're playing good teams and they're even like a, a, a short favorite or maybe even a dog on the road. That's where I like Illinois. I like them in big games against good teams getting points. At home is an 11 and a half point favorite. I just don't think is their cup of tea. I mean, I even watched them struggle for a half against a Michigan team without their best player. I'm going to lean Minnesota getting 11 and a half. It just feels a little bit too big. Arizona, Arizona State, same spread of 11 and a half. Arizona State off the big Washington State upset. Arizona State's been playing better lately. Two covers in a row. I don't think they cover this one, but it's a rivalry game. You got number six, Arizona, who's soft at times. They can get punked. Arizona State. They got some physical guys. They got a coach that can get fired up. They have a home court environment that should be fired up. They've been playing better lately. Got that win against Washington State. 11 and a half? I don't know, man. It, I, this just feels like one of those games maybe where Arizona is more than content, more than happy to go to Arizona State, rivalry game, get in, get out, win by seven, next game. Laying 11 and a half in the road in college basketball against anybody is tough. And the final game of the night is another rivalry. Oregon State, Oregon. Pac-12, man. These state games. 12 and a half, boy. I don't know. Oregon State's shown life at times. Um, they scared Cal pretty good. Cal barely got by him. They were pretty good towards the beginning half of the year in conference play. They actually had some upset, upsets, but it was at home. They play better at home, on the road, Oregon. 
Oregon State's a public underdog. I don't know. I mean, Oregon's not that great either, but God, I don't know. I guess I guess give me the points in what maybe is a nine or a ten point margin. <laughs> it's just a lot of these games are flippy floppy. There's a reason I've only given out one play tomorrow for members, and I love it. And uh, I'm actually going to probably double down on it. Um, it's a great play, but let's go ahead and get one on the whiteboard here. We're at the 25 minute mark of today's video. That's all the games. What are we going to go with on the whiteboard? I will take UCF getting two and a half points. I think they're the better team. I think they win the game. Oklahoma State, you had a little bit of fight there at the end of the year, but they're the bottom feeder of the Big 12. They're right there with West Virginia. So I'm going to go with the better team, and hopefully they can get another road win. Seems to be the trend recently. These road teams in the Big 12, it's almost a, a complete no-no in late February to bet on away teams in this particular conference. Uh, I'm going to go for it. That just seems the way things have been lately. There's no reason to fight it. Hopefully we can cash that pick and make it four out of the six. Make sure you guys drop a like on today's video before you exit out. The link, uh, the walkthrough video on how to become a member, I'll leave pinned at the top of the comment section if you're interested. I'll see you guys in the next video.